Hi, I'm Pete, and this is a show and tell, a bit of a vlog, and I'll just talk about some ideas I have for uh, content on my channel. Now, I'm up in the north here. I came up for a month for the beginning of the school year. Uh, I have uh, one week left to go, and uh, so I did bring some puzzles with me, uh, and I knew I wasn't going to have a lot of time because I am busy with work. I'm busy with wrapping things up at the house. Uh, and frankly, in the north, in September, uh, the, the scenery outside is just fantastic. So I've been uh, spending a fair bit of time out in the uh, Boreal Forest uh, taking pictures of things, uh, which, uh, which is just a lot of fun because it's really my last chance to do this. So um, I did bring some puzzles, and I'll talk to you a little bit about it. So, of course, this, uh, this magnetic, I think they're calling it a Sudoku cube. Um, I've uh, scrambled this. I've solved it. Uh, it's, it's really fantastic. I really enjoyed uh, solving this uh, puzzle. Um, it's a little harder than I expected in places and actually not, not too bad, um, you know, overall. Um, it turns great. Uh, the only little issue I had with it is one of the squares, maybe maybe more than one of the squares is missing the magnet. So uh, the way it works is that these, uh, there are magnets in the middle of each uh, cube position. And I guess on the back of the, uh, okay, I see that two is missing a magnet too. So on the back of these, um, these tiles, there's also a magnet. So they, they kind of snap into place and it is helpful uh, to keep, to kind of, it's helpful when you're manipulating puzzles. So I've noticed now that this two doesn't have a magnet on the back, and there are a couple of positions in the puzzle that don't have magnets either. So I'm not really sure if they've just fallen off, probably what's happened. Um, so um, I do have some uh, tiny magnets uh, at somewhere back in Ottawa. So when I get back, I'm gonna take it apart. I'll find all the tiles that don't have magnets and I will uh, probably glue them on or something like that. So it's not a big deal. I'm pretty sure I have the tiny magnets that you need here. Um, and I am curious if you have one of these, are any of your pieces missing magnets? I, I'm assuming it's not intentional. They probably just fall out. They might be press fitted in and maybe they just, they just fall out. Maybe they just need a bit of glue. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you have one of these and are you missing magnets? Yes or no, right? So do let me know. Anyway, I really enjoyed this, and uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. So, uh, the other puzzles I brought were, uh, of course, my uh, Sun Mum Cube and my four-layer Sun Mum Cube. And I've done absolutely nothing other than uh, bring these into work and uh, really impress <laughs> my, uh, my colleagues with, uh, with the shape-shifting that this thing does. Uh, but I haven't dared scramble it because I know I just, I just don't have the time to sit down and really do this justice. So uh, the other one I brought, well, I brought the two, the two layer, uh, the, the uh, three by two, three by three by two, uh, just to have a, a reference for uh, my old cuboid moves. If I forget, I can practice on this one. So this is the crazy uh, three by three by three that I brought. Uh, and I remember when I was doing the unboxing video, I said, you sometimes need a puzzle that won't bend your brain. Well, guess what? This turned out to be a lot more challenging than I really expected. Um, it's uh, more challenging because of course it has this uh, peculiarity where um, the, the uh, opposite face will, will turn the inner circle. Um, it has another peculiarity in that when you, when you turn up certain pieces, it, that behavior goes away. So, and then it also has the middle layer um, that will do this, this M turn and do this really, really funky uh, uh, slice turn. So yeah, this is this is a great puzzle. Um, not super hard. Kind of hits your cuboid algorithms pretty hard. Um, so if you you remember your cuboid algorithms, you'll probably get a long way on this. So I've had fun solving this. Yeah, I think I've solved it a few times. Okay, um, the next one that I've been having a lot of fun with. This is the um, fusion cube. I think that's what it's called. The fusion cube. It's it's a blast. I'm really having fun with it. Uh, this is my first solve. And as you can see, I'm, I'm sort of getting to what you would consider to be the end game. Now, I don't want to spoil too much about this, but I will say that I was pretty sure that this puzzle 
if I solved it this way, kind of layer by layer, I would end up in a place which I call can't get there from here, right? So yeah, puzzles that do this, is, I call it can't get there from here, where an obvious solution path, you end up getting very close to the end and then there's no way to solve it because you don't have enough uh, pieces, you can't move pieces around. Um, and I think that might be where I am now. I, I'm still working on this. Um, and the question then is, can I, can I recover from this? Or do I have to kind of sacrifice some other solved part of it to be able to continue to solve? Uh, I'm not really sure, but it's just, it's been fun. I've been just kind of poking away at it uh, here and there uh, when I've had a bit of time. And uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying this puzzle. Um, it just, it's, it's really neat. The, uh, the pieces all have different orbits. And of course the obvious orbit sh switching of, of flipping the, the, uh, the edges, that's one, um, but you still have to be able to switch orbits um, like uh, between adjacent um, edges and, uh, or adjacent orbits and things like that. So uh, there's some pretty complicated stuff going on in this, this little puzzle. I really like it. Uh, and then finally, and I have no idea why I brought these because I knew I knew I wasn't going to be able to, to uh, solve these puzzles. So I brought my gem one and my gem 10. <laughs> I just, I just brought them. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I thought I would actually be able to do something with it. Okay. So uh, I'm pretty sure that what I'm holding in my hands is a gem one. So gem one is just an edge turner. That's it, right? That's all you get. Uh, but uh, the gem two, um, it's an edge turner. Uh, but you also get some uh, some square face turning so that that adds quite a bit to it uh, I've broken it in a bit. So basically that involves just sitting when I'm um, When I don't have uh, too much on the go. Maybe I'm watching a YouTube video or something uh, Just sitting there and it's turning turning the faces and just getting it broken in um, And that's really all I've done with uh, the gem 10. So that's my uh, my travel haul uh, I still have, uh, as I say, a week to go. So who knows? I, I, I'm going to keep uh, cranking away at the uh, at the uh, fission cube. I think that's what you call it, fission cube. Now I was uh, going online. Um, I I went online to uh, try and buy some puzzles. I I thought it would be nice to kind of go and and order some puzzles and kind of show that process. But uh, I went. I really didn't see a lot. I I am interested in. I, I saw some crazy five by five puzzles. So some crazy five layer puzzle with the circles. And I think I'm gonna get those or one of them. But they have different variants, and they just they're just calling it a certain variant. I don't know what that means. So I'm gonna have to take a bit of time to look that up and see what each variant is. It's probably the different configurations of the inner circles. Um, so I, I'll probably do that and then maybe get one of those, maybe two, not real sure. But, uh, and then I think I probably need a few more puzzles. So I'm going to take a bit more time to figure out what, uh, what I'm going to buy. Um, not a huge order, but just, uh, just trying to figure it out. Uh, one of the fun things I was looking at was the giant three by threes. So there's an 18 centimeter one. Uh, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, and it's kind of affordable. I don't think I'm going to get it just because, I mean, I still live in a pretty small place. Uh, it is bigger than <laughs> than this place here, but it's still pretty small. Um, but, uh, and then I saw one that was something like 34 centimeters across. And it's so big, they actually charge extra for shipping. And it's quite expensive. So I definitely wouldn't get that. Uh, but I am kind of curious, would you get a giant cube like that? Or do you have one? Uh, apparently these ones turn fairly well, so uh, I'm not sure we'll, you know, be be interested to see see them. Uh, but yeah, I just I I have some big, uh, very puzzle puzzles which take up a lot of room to display. Um, I also have some uh, perplexus puzzles, well perplexus kind of toys, and which will a nice segue. Um, so they take up a lot of room too. So you know I I'm not sure I really have a lot of room to. Um, display these giant uh, three by three puzzles, but you know, it's, it's kind of a kind of would be a conversation piece. So, yeah, let me know how you feel about that displaying these giant puzzles. Okay, 
Okay, so the, so the segue um, on, um, you know, when I mentioned the perplexus is that, you know, my channel, the, the videos that, that people seem to like the most on my channel are the tutorials, right? And those tutorials uh, require, first of all, a lot of preparation, takes a lot of time to do the video, takes a, long, a lot of time to get to a stage where I can do a tutorial on a puzzle because I really have to bring something to the table. I have to be able to bring a consistent, straightforward method of solving the puzzle step by step. Uh, no hand waving. That's my rule. I sometimes break it a little bit. In other words, I have to be able to explain how to solve each step of the puzzle, solve all the special cases. Um, so that means I have to have solved the puzzle quite a few times and seen all of its uh, quirks and, and, and see all the special cases, the parodies and things like that. So that's great. But just to have a channel with regular content where it's tutorials, it's really not feasible, right? I, I can't do that many uh, tutorials a year. So the other video that I featured on the channel that people seem to enjoy are the long solves where I take some big juicy puzzle and solve it for a few hours. So that's what's really been in my channel um, as steady all these years. But uh, sometimes I do vlogs, sometimes I do show and tells, and of course, unboxings. So the segue then, and I was talking about my perplexus, which is not really mechanical puzzles. It's more a, almost like a toy, uh, but I think they kind of get lumped into puzzles as an honorary uh, type of puzzle. But that does lead me to ask the question, would you be interested in seeing a bit, not a lot, but a bit of toy content on my channel? So I am thinking about maybe, I'm not going to compete with the Lego people, right? But occasionally I get some Lego and, Maybe I'd like to do a show and tell on it, uh, not a full review. Again, I'm not competing with, with people who are part of the LEGO network and they get it off for free months in advance. I'm not competing with that. Um, some other things, just some cool toys I've seen, um, you know, because I, I am interested in, in stuff like that, um, especially educational toys. Um, and, you know, I have some ideas about what makes a good educational toy and what makes a bad educational toy. Um, so... You know, I, I don't know just how, how much of that I could do. Um, I'm not sponsored by anyone, um, but uh, I could certainly do do a little bit of it, right? Get a toy here and there and then, you know, find someone to give it to. And uh, I think that would be okay. Yeah, I'd really like to know what you think of all that and any ideas you have for other things I could do on my channel um, that, uh, that would interest you. So do let me know down in the comments. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, so as always, I do appreciate hearing from you and I really would like some feedback. What sorts of videos would you like to see on the channel? Puzzle videos, what's kind of puzzle content? What, some, what are some ideas that you have? Uh, some non-puzzle content. What, what could I do on the channel that you might be interested in watching? I mean, we can always try, right? We can always uh, try different things. And uh, yeah, so I do uh, appreciate any any ideas, any comments you can share with me. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.